Before drawing any birds, we're going to actually talk about the anatomy of the bird's wing. It's really worth knowing this before you actually, um, before you actually draw a bird, but it's not possible for me to give you specific proportions of the wing that I'm drawing because the proportions of the wing are going to vary a lot from species to species. Some birds have a wing that's quite thick from front to back, others have a wing that's quite thin from front to back, some have very long wings, some have a shorter wing. Um, the relationship between this length of this part of the wing and that part of the wing can be different in different species. So uh, what we're just going to focus on are the feathers and they tend to be different different proportions and whatnot in different species but the same feathers tend to be there regardless of, of what species it is even if the size and shape and placement of the feathers is a little bit different. So the first thing to know with the, um, the bird's wing, and we're looking at the top of the wing here, not the bottom, uh, the bird's arm is located over here with the bones and everything inside of it, and then this area here is like the wrist, and you have a section of the arm here, which is really basically like the bird's hand, and they have a separate thumb that comes off there which you may never have noticed before, but next time you're eating chicken wings, take a look at that and you'll notice that they do actually have a thumb that's separated from the rest of the hand, kind of like we do, but they don't have separate fingers. Uh, most species don't anyway. Um, so over the top of this, you'll have wings, and I mean, sorry, you'll have feathers, and the feathers will cover the entire wing. But you get different types of feathers on different parts of the wing. So this section here, these feathers that connect to the arm are going to be what we call secondary feathers. And the feathers that connect uh, to the hand-like structure, the feathers around this area here, are going to be the primary feathers. And then you get feathers that come along in different rows. So I'm just going to draw that in to illustrate what I mean. So, you can draw a bird's wing with different levels of detail, and we're just going to cover the basics here. If you really want to, you can draw in every single feather, but that'll be quite time consuming. It's going to take you a while to do that. So, what we're doing here is like shorthand. We're just uh, outlining the most important feathers. So, the feathers I'm just drawing over here, around this area, you'll notice that I'm drawing them over the top of the thumb. And the thumb does actually have its own feathers called, it's called the Alula, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Alula feathers. And there's just uh, tend to be about three large feathers around there covering the thumb. They, um... They're a bit separate from the other feathers, whereas the rest of the feathers you're going to have here belong into groups. As I mentioned already, we've got the primary feathers around this part, and we've got the secondary feathers around here. They're also grouped according to different rows. So, what I'm drawing here, this group of fe feathers are primary feathers, and they're also called coverts. So they're called the primary coverts. And the idea behind coverts is that they overlap other feathers. Uh, these feathers are, are quite important for smoothing the airflow over the wing. And then you have similar feathers along here, which are called the secondary coverts. And you'll notice that the uh, the coverts that I've drawn here are actually covered by another set of feathers here. I'm just approximating the shape of these um these feathers. Obviously, feathers don't actually have straight edges or 
very rarely have straight edges. And then underneath the covert, you have the flight wings. I mean, sorry, the flight uh, feathers. And if you actually take a look here, the, the feathers that come out, particularly around the, the end of the wing here, are shaped almost like fingers. They don't have the ability to grip onto things like our fingers, but I believe they can, the birds can actually rotate the feathers slightly individually, these ones. Um, they're quite important for flight. They're also quite distinctive looking. If you're going to draw a bird's wing outstretched, you do want to make these feathers look quite distinctive. You tend to get, um, you know, five or six of these large feathers here that can kind of separate, and then after that, you still have uh, lots of other long flight feathers, but they tend to be more tightly grouped and less distinct. Now, as I mentioned before, this is the top of the wing we're looking at. The bottom of the wing is similarly structured in that you have a bunch of short, um, squat, downy feathers at the top of the wing like this and then you have longer feathers coverts covering feathers beneath them and then of course the um, the flight feathers so it looks pretty similar from underneath as well but one thing that is different from underneath is you do have a bunch you have like structured around here a bunch of feathers around the armpit and I believe they're referred to um, as tertiary feathers, the ones around the armpit. Um, tertials. I could be incorrect there. They are also called axillary feathers. I know that um, certainly if you call them axillary feathers you're using the right term there. And these downy feathers here, um, really you can you don't need to draw them all in. One thing that you can do is just draw in a few of them but do a good job of them like this and you draw them quite tightly packed and whatever and then you can just put little um, little feather marks in other areas and it implies additional detail where you haven't actually drawn it Okay, so we have the basic structure of the wing there. As I said, that'll vary a lot from species to species, but just having an understanding of that will really be a great place to start when you're drawing birds, because you're going to know now uh, what to, how to draw the wing, and, and even in different positions you can get a pretty good idea for how to draw the wing, because this is almost like a, um, a Japanese fan or a Chinese fan, where the feathers overlap each other as the the wing closes and folds up. So it's a great place to start. Um, maybe practice drawing that yourself before you actually draw a full bird's body and um, and yeah, see how you go and definitely try applying that when you're drawing birds.